an exam hall after taking an exam isn't any better. The frantic discussions of answers, the heavy beating of hearts, and the anxiety for the results. They're all relatable but hard feelings that build up for the day of the big reveal. If only that day could come sooner. The answer is time travel. But how is there actual physics and theoretical concept behind an imagination of science fiction? As humans, we're engineered to label and accept things as impossible or godly, distorting the truth behind its feasibility. But as humans, we're also curious by nature. We went from worshiping the moon to literally landing on it. The greatest minds did not accept the way reality was. They questioned it, and they transformed it. The digital technology that we possess today in the 21st century would be regarded as science fiction in the 17th century. Yet here we are. The same thing occurred in the world of physics, where time travel was regarded as a comical and pseudoscience area of research 50 years back. Today, it is a legitimate and practical field of research in theoretical physics. But let's just step back here for a second. To understand time travel's rise into physics, how it might be possible, and its implications, we too must take a journey back in time without a time travel machine. It's 1666, and a young man rests beside an orchard tree on a summer day. A gentle breeze sweeps a gust of wind, and with that also, an apple that would change the course of history. This man was none other than Sir Isaac Newton, pioneer and inventor of classical mechanics, which describes motion. Now, motion is the very basics of all physics. It describes and governs how everything interacts within a universe. For example, me walking right now can be described by Newtonian physics. If I'm on an escalator, my speed would be the sum or the difference of my walking speed and the speed of the escalator, depending on what direction I'm going. Trivial, right? Today, time travel, today physics is divided into two. The physics of the very big and the physics of the very small. The physics of the very big is where Albert Einstein comes into the picture. He questioned, can you outrace a light beam? Einstein crafted many scenarios with the speed of light, similar to adding or subtracting, like the escalator scenario. However, when he derived the speed of light, he found it to be constant in any situation. This was a groundbreaking discovery that he couldn't explain, but it had a simple solution to. Speed is the ratio of the distance to the time taken to travel that distance. And if the speed was always constant and never changing, therefore, the distance and the time had to be changing. In other words, space and time were connected and distorted to keep the speed of light constant. The closer something approaches the speed of light, the slower time moves. And this is called time dilation. Light acts as a boundary for causality. And therefore, by traveling faster than it, this results in time travel. Sergei Krikalev, a Russian astronaut that ordered the Earth for 803 days at tens of thousands of kilometers, is 0.02 seconds younger than anyone else born at the same time as him. So, is this the end of my TED talk? Good day and good night. Well, there are a few problems with special relativity. The main one being that near light speeds require a tremendous amount of energy. And secondly, you can't time travel into the past, as time doesn't reverse. And who doesn't want to go back in time and shake hands with Stan Lee, thanking him for the Avengers Infinity Saga? I know I would. But 
to make that wish come true, we must take a look at Einstein's second theory of relativity, which states that gravity and the curvature of space-time is the same. Let's take a look at the Earth and the Moon. The Moon orbits the Earth due to the Earth's gravitational pull. But another way to look at it is that the Moon orbits the Earth due to curved space-time, which sinks the Moon towards the Earth. Think of space-time as a fabric, flat but suspended. If I put a heavy metal ball, it will sink, curving the fabric. And placing another ob object along that curved space would cause it to also sink towards the heavy metal ball. This is exactly what happens between the Earth and the Moon, the only difference being that the Moon is fast enough to stay in orbit. Now, there are many theoretical and practical applications of understanding the curvature of space-time particularly the bizarre celestial structures such as black holes and white holes. Now everybody's seen the first picture of a black hole, and it is more than just a garbage collector for the universe. Black holes are points of densely populated matter, squeezed so hard that it breaks space-time. Coming back to the fabric analogy, black holes curve space-time to such a point that it rips a hole in that fabric. Anything that crosses a boundary of no return, called the event horizon, will not escape a black hole, including light. White holes, on the other hand, are the polar opposites of black holes, as they spew out material from a single point of concentration. They too rip a hole in space-time. Now, the interesting thing is what happens when we combine a black hole and a white hole to form a wormhole, or an Einstein-Rosen bridge. The logic behind this nucleation is so that an object can be dragged in and spewed out instantaneously. Imagine a curved space-time with a sideways U-shape. If a light particle had to travel from point A to point B, it would have to travel across the entirety of this curvature. But if there was a wormhole, a tunnel in space-time, there would be a shortcut. And so, if we had a hypothetical race between a light particle traveling the entire distance and a human simply, simply strapped up on a spaceship ready to go through a wormhole, that human would be faster. And therefore, by traveling faster than the speed of light, that person would have time traveled. Getting cookies from the kitchen to your bedroom is as simple as putting your hand through a portal, grabbing those cookies, and taking it out back to devour. Now, don't let anyone call you lazy for bending the laws of physics. While, there, while understanding the curvature of space-time is necessary for wormholes, gravity can also describe it. So, while Einstein's discoveries were being heavily celebrated, the physics of the very small, or quantum, were also taking over the world. Particles were discovered to have all sorts of strange and complex behavior compared to Newton's classical mechanics. The four fundamental forces of the universe, gravity, electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear forces, and its interactions with matter, dictates the very laws of the universe. I want to show you an equation that almost completely describes this relationship. Now, I know what you're thinking. It does look like someone puked across a bunch of letters and numbers and smeared it across an A4 page. But trust me, the standard model Lagrangian is the closest equation that we have today to a theory of everything. The standard model assigns a particle for each force that is categorized as a boson. And so when gravity was assigned the graviton, its behavior couldn't be explained. Therefore, the standard model was incomplete. And while there are many other elegant theories that take up the challenge of unifying gravity with the other fundamental forces, none are complete or provable. Now, when you are a physicist, 
It's very easy to write what looks like a bunch of hieroglyphics on the blackboard, create your own ideal space-time conditions for a wormhole. But in reality, creating a wormhole is just as hard as trying to achieve near light speeds. The technology is simply centuries ahead of anything that we currently have. And if it were possible to create a wormhole, would time traveling change the past, the present, and the future? Imagine going back in time and never letting your grandparents meet. Would you exist? Could you rewrite history as we know it? It is clear that with time travel arises many paradoxes and alternate timelines, further complicating physics. But don't get disappointed, Back to the Future fans, because time travel is more than a dream of science fiction. It's one of humanity's greatest questions. And perhaps one day, we'll go through a wormhole, not reading a history book, to see how we really got here. And perhaps, just maybe, you might see that test score before it even happens. Thank you.